to 1, First Paul, chapter 1, verses 1 to 9. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The gospel is taken from John 1, beginning at verse 29. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming towards him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, Where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. In January, in the church calendar, the readings focus on the epiphany. Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, the Promised One, is revealed to the shepherds, the wise men, and the Old Testament, the one whom the Old Testament points to, the one whom God reveals to John the Baptist. 
Last week, we looked at Christ's baptism. And today, we're looking at the events that follow. Twice in the Gospel reading, John the Baptist says that Jesus is the Lamb of God. He says, here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And every week, we proclaim that same message. We say, here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world when we come and share in the Lord's Supper. John the Baptist also said in today's reading, and I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. Christ is the full and final sacrifice for all of our sins. He is the substitution that delivers us from all of God's judgment. He is the ransom paid for us that sets us free. And through his sonship, we are delivered out of slavery and adopted as children of God. God revealed himself to us through Christ. And Christ reveals God's love to us and to the world. Christ saves us. He reconciles us to God and he transforms us into new creations, as we heard in the first reading today. Christ shares in our mortal life so that we may share in his risen life. What we see today is when John the Baptist has this revelation of who Christ is, he shares and reveals Christ to his disciples. Can you remember when and how Christ was revealed to you? It might have been as a child coming to church with your family. It might have been as a young person attending a youth group or a youth camp. It might be through a friend or a colleague. For some of us, Christ is revealed through a spouse. And what do we learn from how the disciples, John's disciples respond to Christ when Christ is revealed to them? What we see from today's gospel reading is that they had heard about Jesus from John the Baptist. So they were able to recognize the Christ. And when they recognized him, they immediately followed him. They spent time with him and got to know him. And then what we see is when they got to know him, they immediately went to go and share that good news. Andrew goes to tell his brother, just as people might have shared Jesus with us. Then what we see is that Simon's name, Jesus changed Simon's name to Peter. And maybe that shows us something about what is spoken about in today's readings about being a new creation. That when we Jesus is revealed to us. We are transformed into a new creation, given a new identity as children of God. Now, I, like many of you, got to know Jesus as a child by going to church every Sunday. And um, so that is what we did. And then when I went to university and I had the choice, I stopped going to church as regularly. And I remember, you know, 
when you go to, to school, you go to primary school, it's very structured. You know where you're going every day, you know what you're doing every day. And then you go to secondary school, and it's also very structured. You know where you need to be and what you need to do. And I went to university, and it was the same. But what I found is when I finished university, the anxiety, because suddenly there was nothing else. It was a blank. There was an abyss. And I was very, very anxious and worried. I didn't know what it's going to look like. Am I going to get a job? Where am I going to get a job? You can apply to so many jobs. You have no idea where you're going to go. And it was just a very, very uncertain time. And I remember my neighbor talking to me and reminding me of how much Jesus loved me. And she encouraged me to pray. And she, she told me that, you know, as you pray, that God will guide you. And she encouraged me to read the Bible. And she said that the Bible is there to, to guide you, that God wants to speak to you. And I remember reading the Bible and coming across the verse, Jeremiah 29, verses 11 to 13, which says, for I alone know the plans that I have for you. And I remember the immense comfort and relief that those verses gave to me because I had no plans whatsoever, but knowing that God had plans for me was just really assuring. And I prayed the prayer that, Lord, whatever those plans are, I pray that I'll be able to walk in those plans that you have for me. You see, the Christian journey is not just a once-off event. It's an everyday walk with God. It's as we go around doing the mundane things of life and the busyness of life, the shopping and the cleaning and the cooking and the school runs. It's us talking to God as we're doing all of that stuff, sharing our thoughts and our concerns, our worries, our concerns for others in our lives. And as we do that and we, we praising God and giving him thanks, just in the everyday. It's about knowing God for ourselves through his word, through our personal prayer, through coming to church and listening to the word, through activities like Bible studies and ways that we can know more. Jesus is revealed through prayer, through the Bible, through the breaking of bread, which we're going to do together, through other people, through praise, and by his spirit. He is continually revealed to us. And we want to know him more. And just like John the Baptist's disciples, as we know him more, we are called to share him more with others. Now, God, John's gospel is an evangelistic gospel. But often for us, we feel like, I'm not an evangelist. Like, I could not do that. I do not feel equipped. But we bear witness to Jesus through our lives, through how we live our lives, through our words, and through our actions. We can share the difference that Christ has made in our lives. And we can invite others. Just as we heard this morning through Open Book, the, the invitations that the school has, has given you and the difference that that has made. Invitation is really important. We hear many stories of people coming through, to Christ just through invitation alone being invited to a church camp, or even being invited to messy church, or to the youth group, through footprints on a Monday, to our, to our wild garden, to a coffee and a chat on a Saturday, invitation. And what we see in today's gospel reading is Christ's invitation. Christ says to John the Baptist's disciples, come and see. And that invitation that Christ offers to us, we extend that same invitation to others. And there 
are many opportunities for us to invite people to come to St. Peter's. We can invite people to come and see the Angel Project, for there might be special services like Remembrance Service or the Nativity, when many, many people were invited who don't ordinarily come to church. So invitation. Christ is revealed through our invitation, through our lives. And what we've seen today is that God revealed himself to us through Christ. We thought about how Christ revealed himself to us. And hopefully from today, we'll start considering how in our different ways we can extend the invitation and reveal Christ to others. We've looked at John the Baptist's disciples, and it gives us some examples of how we can live this Christian journey every day, and how we can extend that invitation to Christ by his Spirit. Let us take a moment to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for revealing yourself to us through your Son and by your Spirit. We ask that you would come now by your Spirit as you filled us at our baptism. Come and fill us again. Equip us with the words to say, with the courage to extend an invitation to the people in our lives and to share this good news, this gift that we have enjoyed with others. We ask this all in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.